Hey everyone, welcome back to another Safari Limited Review. Today we're going to take a look at the retired Ineosaurus. This figure came out not too long ago, around 2017, and it was retired at the end of 2020. I have no idea why Safari keeps retiring their stellar Ceratopsian figures. Seriously, they have some of the best in the business, but it is what it is, and I'm doing this review since this figure hasn't been retired for too long. It's still relatively easy to get your hands on one and draw some attention to it for people that missed out on this beautiful looking figure. Now, if you're trying to track this figure down, I suggest just Googling uh, the Safari Ineosaurus. So a couple retailers still have them in stock. I think Happy Hen was one of them. A uh, few are still on eBay, and they're still going for around retail price, around that, like that $10, $11, $12 range. But, you know, don't sleep on it because once these uh, the supply of figures dries up, it gets pretty hard to track these down. So, you know, get them while they're still relatively cheap. Now, before we throw this figure up on the turntable, let's give a little history lesson on Ineosaurus. I'm going to give the abridged version because if I did the whole story, this video would probably be like 30 minutes long. So, this species of Ceratopsian was discovered by the famous paleontologist Jack Horner. The reason for the discovery was back in 1985, he was denied access to the famous Egg Mountain location. That's where he discovered Myasaurus nest. So, he had to find a couple other locations to excavate fossils. He was on the hunt for hadrosaur fossils and he hit up a couple bone beds, a uh, canyon bone bed and the dinosaur ridge quarry, and they found a lot of Ceratopsian material. Unfortunately, Jack Horner was not interested in ceratops, he was in, interested in hadrosaurs, so he really didn't feel like describing these. But then a couple years down the road, he felt complied to do it. He described them, but he didn't name them. He called them uh, transitional taxes, you know, like kind of like a, a gap between Styracosaurus and Pachyrhinosaurus. He named uh, three transitional taxes, uh, A, B, and C, and the transitional taxa B end up being the species of Ineosaurus. I hope all that made sense because I was reading on Wikipedia and it kept going on and on and on. So that is the Cliff Notes version. So let's throw this figure up on the turntable and get this review going. And now let's start with this 360 degree view of the Ineosaurus. A very nice looking figure from Safari. And as usual, Doug Watson, he sculpts most of the Ceratopsians from them, did an absolutely fantastic job with this figure it has a very nice lifelike active pose that left foot is lifted up like the animals about to charge forward and sculpting in a roaring pose with a big thick heavy tongue sculpted in the mouth the color scheme is not very vivid it's very natural look it's mostly just brown and grays you have a little bit of bright red and yellow on the fenestra on the frill but you know it's a beautifully sculpted figure you know safari figures they're they're pretty much very accurate and they're super super affordable this figure i think was like around ten dollars which is an absolute steal for the quality of scientific accuracy that you're getting with it and i definitely definitely recommend if you don't have one track this figure down before the supply dries up and now for a couple quick measurements this figure is six and a quarter inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the beak and about two and a half inches tall to the top of the frill so Ineosaurus is estimated around 15 feet long. So I'll put this figure somewhere in the 129 scale range. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure starting with this beautiful head sculpt. I love Doug Watson's style of sculpting Ceratopsians. Like I always say, they're among my favorite Ceratopsian figures from all companies. And as you can see, this figure turned out absolutely beautiful. You can see that forward facing nose horn is nicely sculpted. Some nice ridges uh, sculpted in there with a nice dark wash to bring out all that detail. The eye is painted in yellow with a black pupil. You can see the nice thick tongue poking out as the animal is roaring that is painted in a matte pink color. You can see the nostrils are painted in black. And then looking at it from the top, you can see some coloration on the fenestras of the frill. You can see some bright red and yellow mixed in. You can see the horns on the back are nicely sculpted. This one's a little bit warped because I am an absolute jackass how I store my dinosaur figures. So it got a little bit warped in the box with, you know, with 8 million figures uh, resting on top of it. And then turn it around to the side you can see the air canal is sculpted and picked out in black paint and then looking right here this is my favorite part about this figure you notice it's not uh symmetrical you have you know these little bony uh, bosses right here and there's a little bit of a divot between these two if you look on the other side 
there is no divot. That is because uh, Doug Watson actually sculpted the skull of this animal based on the holotype of Ineosaurus. And let's get the camera to focus in on it before I give my Wikipedia reasoning for that. That is because Centrosaurinides uh, have a tendency to reabsorb the brow horns later in life. So some of the later, like the older individual skulls of Ineosaurus found in that bone bed showed this feature. And this is based off the holotype skull. So that is amazing uh, attention to detail from Doug. And that's why I really, really like this model. And then going down to the body, come on camera, focus in. You get some nice, lovely scale detail. Now the scales are oversized for a model of this size. And, and that doesn't bother me. It gives it a nice, you know, texture, tactile feel when you're holding the figure. I'm not going to flip out that, you know, all oh, the scales are too big. Oh, the figure's ruined. It looks nice. It looks nice. Stop complaining. But uh, you can see he took some inspiration from the Lane Triceratops skin impressions with those uh, dimply uh, large scales in there with these little bumps coming out in the middle of them. So that is a really nice touch. And then going down to the front feet, they are nicely sculpted. These outer toes don't have claws on them, which is scientifically accurate. The rest of the toe claws I picked out a nice glossy brown paint. You can see that left foot lift up, lifted up. Nice lifelike pose like the animal is about to take a step forward. And then turn the figure over. You have a nice cream coat with a little bit of orange uh, dry brushing on there. And since we have the figure turned over, let's do our dinosaur butthole check. There it is. A nice, nice cloaca slit. And then going down to the thighs, you have nice muscular sculpted thighs. You can see some nice muscle uh, detail sculpted in there. Uh, the hind feet, same thing. Toe claws are picked out in a glossy black paint. And then looking at the figure from the top, you have some nice thick beefy uh, hip region and a really nice thick tail base with all those large scales going down to about the three quarter point of the tail. So yeah, all in all, a really Nicely sculpted Ceratopsian figures. Doug always does a great job on these. Moving on with comparisons, let's first compare it to some other Ineosaur figures from other companies. First up, here it is with Collect A's version, which is a fantastic figure. I think this figure only costs like five or six dollars. Uh, Collect A does some great Ceratopsians also, even though they do have a habit of reconstructing with quills on the back just because, you know, Cetacosaurus. Uh, had them but still a great figure and let's move this off to the side and let me get my beer glass off to the side before I knock it over yes I'm always usually drinking a cool frosty while I'm doing these reviews and next up here it is with the Beast of the Mesozoic Ineosaurus you know which is a fantastic figure love me some articulated dinosaur figures and I think PNSO did an Ineosaurus minifigure, but I don't have it. So really not many Ineosaurus figures out there, but you know we have at least four, so that's pretty cool. And next up here it is with Safari's awesome feather T-Rex. Come on, stand, stand, stand. Oh, years of standing perfectly, and now you finally decide the warp, but still a great, great. There we go. Hey, hey, you're standing. Nice job, Fatso. So yeah, great, great Tyrannosaurus figure, even though we, we kind of got away from uh, Feather T-Rexes. Still one of the best products Safari has ever put out. And next up, here it is with Safari Limited's Edmontosaurus. And let's do a two medicine formation group shot. That is the formation that Anyosaurus was found in. Here is the Beta. Yoplocephalus. I really, really need to review uh, some bad tat figures on the channel. I have not done any, and that is an absolute shame. Going to have to rectify that really soon. Here it is with Safari's Despletosaurus and the old Wild Safari Hypacrosaurus. And lastly, here is the Ineosaurus with the rest of Safari Ceratopsians. As you can see, over the years, they have given us a great variety of species. I believe all these were sculpted by Doug Watson. You, you can usually tell uh, by how the figure is sculpted that Doug did it, especially when it comes to the feet of the Ceratopsians. So starting at the top, we have Triceratops, Vegaceratops, Pachyrhinosaurus, Diabloceratops. Here's the Ineosaurus. Regaloceratops, Styracosaurus, and Nasutoceratops, which is hands down my favorite figure ever produced from Safari, which is also unfortunately retired like this poor Ineosaurus figure.
So final thoughts on this Ineosaurus figure. As with any Ceratopsian from Safari, I always highly recommend them. They're among my favorite Ceratopsian figures from any company and they're so affordable and they're very scientifically accurate. Doug Watson always does an absolute bang up job sculpting these figures and this Ineosaurus is pretty cool because you know the head is based off the holotype you know with that asymmetrical look on those brow horns. So a really neat figure to add to your collection. Unfortunately it's retired but it hasn't been retired too long so it should be relatively easy to track down just you know Google search it see if any retailers or anyone eBay has it retails around like that 10 12 dollar range but definitely don't sleep on it because you know once these retired figures disappear they rarely pop up and when they do you know they're kind of expensive so definitely get on it if you're still tracking one down so that will do it for the review uh, I have uh, the rebore sort of uh, Faganax coming in should be here in the next few days so at least I'll have you know something new to review and I'll continue reviewing these older figures until you know Dominion comes out and there's a whole slew of figures to destroy my wallet coming out so that will do it I am done with my beer you guys have a good one and as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously it's greatly appreciated and I'll see you guys for the next one